Hello and welcome to part 5 of the University of Auckland's six-part video series on Nectar Onboarding, which is a hands-on guide to getting you up and running with a remote Windows machine to assist your analysis. At the end of the last video, we had created our instance, we had applied appropriate security groups, and we had created a volume which we could store our data in. This video we will look at logging into Windows for the first time, setting up an administrator account, then creating a user account and preparing the volume storage that we had created in the previous video for use by Windows. As always these videos are specific to the University of Auckland and while a lot of the information that we cover uh, is generic I would request that any of you who are using Nectar at a node that is not the Auckland University node please check with your local node before following these instructions. I'm going now going to go to the Nectar dashboard so I will see you shortly. And here we are. So we have our video test instance that we created. We have attached security groups that will allow us to log in remotely. And we have attached the volume store so that we have a virtual hard disk ready for us to access. In order to look at the Windows that is currently running on this instance, we need to first click the link that has been generated with the name of the instance. In this case it's Chris Video Test. When I click that link I will be taken to another web page. Where I am presented with an overview of the virtual machine that I have created, the remote computer don't need to worry about any of this but along the top we can see we have a tabbed interface and we need to select console tab. Now when we select the console tab this will open up a window in which we can see the virtual machine that is running. So because we have a new virtual machine with a new instance of Windows running, we need to go through the process of setting up the Windows installation. Uh, for my case, all of these settings are appropriate, so I can just select Next. Now, if you're not using the University of Auckland Windows uh, image, this may have already been done. Alternatively, you may need to choose a different country or region, potentially a different keyboard layout. So I click Next. I'm then asked to accept the license agreement. Uh, so I've read those before. I can accept. And now I'm presented with a, a window where I'm asked for a password for the built-in administrator account. This password needs to meet the University of Auckland's password requirements. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what they are, but it involves being a minimum length, having a mix of alphanumeric and numeric characters, and capitals and lowercase. Now, I just attempted to type there, um, unfortunately nothing happened and the reason that nothing happened is because this window out here, my browser, currently has the focus of my computer. In order to get the focus into the console machine I need to click on the grey bar at the top here and then when I start typing you can see the characters are coming up. 
Okay, so I just type my password and then I re-enter my password, making sure they're the same, and click finish. Now, my account has been created. In order to log in, I need to send a control alt delete signal to the computer, the virtual machine. If I try and hold down control alt delete on my keyboard, that's going to try and shut down my local machine. So to be able to log in, I need to come across to the gray bar and the button on the top right hand corner here which is send control alt delete. If I click on that button then I'm presented with the option to choose the account that I wish to log in with. So I need to log in with the administrator account that I set a password for and I enter my password and then this should, fingers crossed, bring me into a Windows environment. Now the Windows environment that has been set up is specific to the University of Auckland. First time I log in I'm asked if I want to find PCs on my network. Now we remember that this is a virtual machine that's sitting in the data center so there are no other machines attached to it. We can click no to get rid of that. And the default is for Windows to start a server manager dashboard. Um, I normally just click that, get rid of it. So here is the Windows image as it is set up. Uh, as you can see, we have some useful analytical tools pre installed. So there is a copy of R and R Studio, and we also have Python installed with the Spider and Jupyter Notebook IDEs available. Before we can use that though, we need to set up some things, a user account, and set up our hard drive space that we've created. To do that, come to the Start button and select Administrative Tools. This will then present you with a list of options the one that we're interested in is the computer management option. So double click computer management and that will open another window. So we look at computer management. There are various tasks that we can undertake on the left hand panel. First we want to find local users and groups and click on that and then go to the users folder and double click that. We now need to create a user account. It's a very good idea to do that um, rather than run everything through the administrator account. So I'm going to create a user account by right clicking and selecting new user. I then give myself a username and fill in my details plus a different password to the one that I use for the administrator account. Okay, now very important step here. You can see with the new user account that there is a option for the user must change password at next login. For some reason, which I'm not 100% certain of, if this is selected, the login to the virtual machine fails. So please deselect that as an option and then click create the user and close. And we can see there is a new user here um, that is available for me to log in with. Now this user currently doesn't have any access rights. So we need to add the user to the appropriate groups in order for me to be able to log in and do things in this virtual machine. 
if we go to the left hand side and click on groups there are a range of different groups that have been predefined and you can look to get a little more information about them by expanding out the description column by clicking and dragging um, at the top of that. The one that I'm interested in is the remote desktop users and if we look at the description of this group members in this group are granted the right to log on remotely so I'm going to be logging on from my local machine which is remote compared to the virtual machine so I need to add myself to this group if I double click on the remote desktop users you can see the members group is currently empty so I need to add a member and I come to the new window select users the object names I put my name I can check to make sure I've spelled it correctly you'll see Chris video test which is the name that I allocated this machine when I created the instance and my user so I click OK and you can see now I exist as a member of the remote desktop users pro group so I can apply that and click OK the other group that I find useful to add myself to is the power users group which allows me some administrative powers again if I double click come to the add button type my name in and then click OK I'm now a member of this group as well and we can apply OK so now we have users that we require in order to be able to log in the other thing that we need to do is to ensure that the volume store that we generated and attached is available to us to do that come to the left hand panel under storage look for disk management select that and you can see that I have disk 0 which is currently partitioned and healthy that is the operating system that is the disk space that was created with the instance flavor below that I have another disk which is currently unknown which is 20 gigabytes so this is the volume store that I created and attached in its current state it is offline so the first thing we need to do is we need to ensure that that is online to do that come to the little box part of the disk on the left here right click and select online I'm now told that that disk is online but it's not initialized so again I need to go through a step of initialization to do that I right click again and then select initialize disk the disk that I want to be initialized is disk 1 there are two partition styles MBR and GPT don't need to worry too much about these um, my recommendation is that if you have a large volume storage that you're attaching you select GPT and then click OK now I can see I have a disk here uh, that currently exists but is unallocated so I need to now link this disk space that exists with a drive in Windows come into the disk space and right click and then select new simple volume this will bring up a wizard for me so I just click next I need to specify how much of the volume I'm going to use typically you'd want to use everything um, but if you have a more complex partition scheme in mind here is where you take the opportunity to do that partitioning I'm going to save with the defaults so I click next I can choose a drive letter that I wish to attach it to from A to Z I'm happy with the default so I'm going to leave that as D and click next 
I'm going to format this drive. I don't have any data on it, it hasn't been used previously. Uh, if this was a drive that had data on it, that you had moved from one Windows machine to another Windows machine, then you would not want to format that volume because doing so will remove that data. Happy with the default NTFS, I am going to change the volume label to something that is more meaningful to me. And I just want to perform a quick format. And I click Next. I can check to see what the wizard is going to do. I'm happy with all of this, so I can click Finish. And now that disk has been formatted and assigned to Drive D. So if I close Computer Management and the Administrative Tools, I can take a look in the Explorer and see I now have two drives, the original OS drive and a data drive, which is drive D, that has 19.8 gigabytes of memory free for me to use. Close that. Go to the Windows Start button, up to Power Options. Oh, no, I don't need to do that, sorry. Um, from here, I have finished in this case. So I can return to the Instances window. And we're all ready to log into our remote machine in the next video. Thank you, and I'll see you for the next video.